Have you wanted to travel to Istanbul or to Mykonos? Come with me. My wife and I are going to take you on a journey to those two cities right now. One of the things that Karen and I have learned in our travels around the world is that we as Americans know very little about world history. And it's, it's probably not America's fault, but it's I haven't paid attention. And so one of the things I have to do is learn about history. So as you'll notice, as we were coming in on the, on the cruise ship, you saw a couple of mosques. And we actually went to both of those. Now at the time, the second one that you saw with the colorful, that was the Hagia Sophia. That was actually the largest church and for a thousand years, it was built in about 500 AD. The Hagia Sophia was built in 537 as the patriarchal cathedral of the imperial capital of Constantinople, which is what Istanbul was called at the time. So it was, uh, it was in the Eastern Orthodox Church, except during the Latin Empire from 1204 to 1261, when it became the city's Latin Catholic Cathedral. So in 1453, after the fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Empire, it was converted into a mosque. And so you're going to see those uh, turrets and things like that. Those were added uh, after that in part of the conversion of taking that cathedral, the cathedral and transforming it into a mosque. Um, in 1935, the uh, secular government converted it to a museum. but And so it was a museum when we were there. Uh, but now as of 2020, it is a fully functioning mosque once again. Here is the Hagia Sophia, um, and it's just an amazing example built by the Eastern Roman Emperor Justinian, and it features a dome that they call a fully appendative dome, which is considered the epitome of Byzantine architecture. When it was built, it was the world's largest interior space and among the first to employ this special dome. It changed the course of architecture from that point on. Unbelievable. St. Sophia Church. It is amazing uh, when we noticed the mosaics, very high up, hard to access, but look at the intricacy of these. and They have lasted hundreds and hundreds of years. It's just so beautiful. Um, wow, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful designs made with mosaics. 
when I see these mosaics, it almost reminds me of my daughter's embroidery thread designs. Relatively close geographically to the Hagia Sophia is this mosque, which is known as the Blue Mosque. And so we'll take you inside of that. It was built specifically to be a mosque, and it, it was the principal mosque of Istanbul. Um, and I think it was inspired by the Hagia Sophia because that had been built beforehand. As we watch this last clip from the Blue Mosque, I'm going to tell you a couple things. The next thing we're going to show you is a bazaar that we went to, and it's fantastic. Uh, but one of the things, there's a story right before you enter that bazaar is where the restrooms are. And when you travel like this, you have to actually pay money to use the restrooms. But that wasn't the worst of it. There was another tourist in the ladies' restroom with, with, that my wife went to here, and she could overhear this lady saying, Where the bleep is the toilet? Because it was just a whole sort of a structure that you had to go to the bathroom in. And for someone from America, that was unexpected and she didn't exactly know what to do with that. Another problem that we had was that uh, we rode a bus on our way to see another uh, structure. I didn't have pictures of it here. But we got in a bus wreck. And uh, one of the things, since we were associated with Princess Cruises, they called the police right away. And the situation was resolved, and it was wonderful because we could just sit there in the bus. We didn't have to talk to anybody, but the but the police and the authorities took care of everything. When it was a Christian church, it did not have the minarets, and it was, as I say, the greatest Christian church. I was going to leave the conversation with the person who was talking to us as we were leaving Istanbul, but one of the things he pointed out was how you notice reflection on the very tips of the minarets. Virtually all of them are gold. There's just a couple that are not gold, but all these are gold tipped. And you'll notice as the sun glistens off of them as we leave. And also you see the superimposition of the four minarets turning into just three when you just line up perfectly. It was an amazing experience. So now we travel from Istanbul down to Mykonos, which is a small island of Greece. We had a wonderful time. It was just so beautiful. So let me show you what we saw. Oh yeah. Mykonos. Beautiful little chapel. The, the juxtaposition. Our ship. Across the harbor to where we were tendered. Okay, just for a point of reference, I'm going to come back to that blue building that was behind Karen, and I'm going to now sweep off to the right. So the first scene was sweeping to the 
uh, left, and now I'm sweeping to the right, and you can see the beautiful white architecture, all these homes that are built up into the hills. But you notice those are the windmills that are kind of the feature, something that everybody wants to take pictures of and things like that, the Mykonos windmills. And they were just really beautiful and just a wonderful thing to see. Now, the other thing is Mykonos, we were not able to um, come up to the dock, so we had to use these um, essentially what what are the lifeboats but they serve as tenders look at this this is the interior of a house these columns form the atrium look how high the first story would have been and then we've got the mosaic in the center that is absolutely amazing yeah, a better picture of that Is where all these rooms were. Still doing restoration. Those were places where they would put oil for lamps. So if you can imagine, we just see the rocks that are there. But remember, all these rocks would have been covered by this um, this plaster, and then there'd be beautiful colors and things like this. And I guess one of the things, as I stand here and look at the stairs that go up onto what would be the second story, uh, you know, they talk about in the Bible where the churches would meet in the homes. Now I'm starting to see these are huge structures in some of these rich merchants, and you can see how that would actually work. This is how the plaster was. Or might it look like brick marble. How about that? Here's the time. I'm do the best I can getting this. Look at the merchant's house. Wow. Isn't that amazing to see these homes and the beauty that would have been surrounding you if you lived here? You wouldn't see these rocks. There would be beautiful things. Now look at this floor. The floor had this beautiful mosaic tile, so the homes would have all this color and beautiful, beautiful things associated with it. Now, the Delos Lions, uh, this is, we don't exactly know what role they played, but obviously these are windswept and, and they're not like they used to be, obviously, but there would have been some sort of temples and some worship and things like that. I saw this uh, little boat and I thought that's a beautiful thing so I decided to go ahead and take a picture of it and, and show it to you because it was so wonderful. Well there's my bride of 25 years and uh, we're getting ready to say goodbye to the island of Mykonos. We had a beautiful time, there are the windmills. Well there you have it. What a beautiful place to visit and can't wait to come back and, and visit there again. But our journey continues, and I'm David Day with My Retirement Quest. I'd love to invite you along. Our next stop is going to be the city of Pompeii, and you'll see Mount Edna up close, and then we'll be on to Rome and Florence, all sorts of fun uh, stops along the, along the coast of Italy there. So uh, stay tuned and watch this next video, and it will be the video of Pompeii.